Laser sights can deter threats and aid in quick target identification, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, it's a new big bore revolver, plus your range reports and more. Call in now, one Tom Talk Gun. Now, here's Tom. Oh, settle in. We are in for some fun today. We have a lot of things to talk about. Hey, welcome. I am Tom Gresham. I'm your host here. It's called Gun Talk. Well, we're going to talk about guns, duh. And we're going to have a bunch of fun. Uh, It is uh, a continuation. Uh, I think maybe we're going to call 2017 the year of the revolver. Why not? We can call it whatever we want, right? <laughs> so I was out doing some uh, revolver shooting yesterday. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And we'll have some news about a new revolver coming out uh, in about an hour from now. A lot of things going on. We were shooting big guns and little guns and some quiet guns. Ooh, that was really fun. Uh, just lots of cool things going on. Also, a lot of news. We have uh, good news and some not-so-good news from the courts, from Congress, from the Olympic Committee. International U.S. Olympic Committees want to eliminate men's double trap from the Olympics. Huh. Reading this story from the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Under the apparent direction of the International Olympic Committee, IOC, and the U.S. Olympic Committee, USOC, The International Sports Shooting Federation will be holding a vote Tuesday, that is like Tuesday, coming right up, to eliminate men's double trap and possibly two other other shooting events from future Olympic Games. A political move that could result in the subsequent removal of all, listen up, all Olympic-style shooting events from the venue. This move could end up removing all shooting from the Olympics. The action, it says, comes under the guise of eliminating gender inequality from the games through the IOC's agenda to ensure 50-50 gender participation by participation by 2020. However, no alternative consideration, such as adding women's double trap back into the venue or converting doubles trap into a men's and women's team competition have been brought to the table to meet the IOC agenda. In other words, they're saying, let's get rid of men's double trap because it's all about men and doesn't involve women. But no one said, hey, how do, why don't we just let women shoot in it? Just call it doubles trap. Or why don't we bring back, which was eliminated a few uh, games ago, women's double trap. Then you'll have a women's event, a men's event. We achieve the much sought after gender equality. I would urge you right now, because this is going to happen Tuesday, that's in two days from now, I would urge you to go onto Twitter and Facebook and look for the U.S. Olympic Committee, the International Shooting Sports Federation, the Olympic Committee, IOC, their accounts on Twitter and Facebook, because that's going to be about the fastest and best way and maybe the only way for us to hammer them and get on board and say, no, do not eliminate any shooting events from the Olympics. We love these events. We watch the Olympics because of these events. We will turn off the Olympics from our TVs. Now, I know they don't cover them a whole lot here, but we're going to do what we can do. Huh. Just, Just another... Another way that shooting guns, gun owners, they're all being marginalized. They're all being set aside, attacked. Try to make try to make them smaller. Decrease the footprint. If you can marginalize something, you can then take action against it. You know, you don't take action against the NFL, it's too big. But if we can just make shooting and hunting and gun owners, gun ownership small and insignificant, 
Well, then we could just do what we want to do to it. And how do we combat that? We stand up and make a lot of noise. Really that simple. We just stand up and we make a lot of noise. Not next week. Right now. Today. Today and tomorrow. As I'm talking to you right now. Today and tomorrow. The IOC, USOC, and the International... uh, Let me get the correct wording because I want you to get this right. The... International Sports Shooting Federation, the ISSF. Okay, that will get you there. <sighs> Let's go talk to uh, Mark. He's in Illinois on three. Hey, Mark, what's on your mind? Yeah, Tom, um, the thing we need to get ready for, and we should do everything we could to things like repeal the NFA, repeal every gun law, get, get these gun laws found unconstitutional, anyway, you know, disable them, but. We need to be ready because my guess is you're seeing what the left is doing. Wait till you see what the anti-gunners do. We haven't seen actual acts of terrorism by them. They haven't, you know, um, they haven't fired bomb gun shops. Uh, they haven't tried to plant explosives in a gun show, kidnappings. We haven't seen that kind of stuff yet. But my guess is when we go to start picking their anti-gun world apart, they w- we will. Do you think they're going to go from just protesting and political action to actual physical violence? Oh, I think so. What makes you think so? What, what's leading you to that thought? Uh, just how determined you, you really see them when, when push comes to shove. And we, we've what? seen what the left in general is capable of already. Yeah, we've seen the the protests, which are really not protests, but riots. Where no, they, those are riots. They burn, you know, buildings and cars and attack people and punch people and knock them down, and you know, walk up and and do a sneak attack, uh, pepper spray people in the face because they're speaking in favor of Donald Trump. Those kind of physical attacks. So you know, you may be onto something. Okay, let me take that thought. Let's let's say I buy into that, Mark. Let's go to the. Okay, then what? What does that mean for us? What should we do if we think that's a reality? Ooh, that's a tough one. That that's probably going to mean when we when we go to a gun show, you're going to have to keep your eyes peeled. We might need to be carrying. We might need need to be looking for a, an escape from the from the show and as multiple ways out. Looking you know, looking for anything that looks odd. Um, kind of the same thing we do anyway. Where we, no matter where we go, we do that, right? Yeah, except, except a lot of people don't. <laughs> well, that's true. And the other thing is, uh, in many gun shows, maybe most gun shows, you are not supposed to carry uh, in there with a loaded gun. A lot of them have the no carry signs. And I'm look, I get why, because you always have some dolt who says, hey, let me try my gun in that holster with his loaded gun. And then we have this disconcerting loud noise. Uh, so I get that, but to your point, gun stores, it's always funny. People say, you know, for the first person offender, uh, and Mark, look, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. I, I do want to mention this. When we do our first person offender show, we've had a couple of scenarios in there where people are working at a gun store and it gets robbed. And it's the weirdest thing. We get these YouTube comments. That people say, well, that's just stupid. Nobody would ever rob a gun store. To which we usually respond and we post, you know, six to 12 news stories of that many robberies, armed robberies, of gun stores. Now, I know a lot of gun stores where the people who work there carry openly. I don't have a problem with that. I think probably that maybe makes a statement, dissuades people who might want to come in and rob the place. Um, Doesn't always, clearly, but then again, not Fair to say that not all uh, criminals are masterminds of crime. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. A lot of things going on. We have, of course, the, uh, the the Olympics. Oh, here's an interesting one. Love this one. Home invasions. We talk about home invasions a good bit. Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. A man says he was just chatting on FaceTime, like Skype, when four armed suspects burst through the door and attacked him. Steve Ellett said the men took him... I told him to put his hands up. The next thing he knew, he was being held at gunpoint. All the while, his friend 
Carson Jeffries in San Diego was watching over his phone. They were doing FaceTime in the middle of this, and all of a sudden there's this home invasion. So his buddy in San Diego calls the Scottsdale, Arizona police, reports the home invasion. The police surround the complex, arrested four men on multiple felony charges. The guy says, FaceTime saved my life. There you go. I also just saw a uh, news report. It's one of these deals where they're saying, well, we're, we're having classes, self-defense classes for women. And it goes on to say the, the goal of this is to make women feel safe as they go about in their community. To which I just react and go, well, well that's stupid. I'm sorry. I just I, I hate to be harsh and cruel and mean, but that's just dumb. The goal shouldn't be to make women feel safe. The goal should be to make women safe. Do we want people just to feel safe when they're not actually safe? Or do we want to actually teach them how to be safer? So when someone says, well, you know, I just don't feel safe here, my response is, I don't care. Do you want to feel safe or do you want to be safe? And if you don't understand the difference between the two, then it's time for us to have a little sit down and discuss this in some depth. How do you react to that? Now, when we come back, I want to talk to you about my day at the range. I'm also seeking your range reports. I'm going to have an official Gun Talk range report for you. We'll be right back. Slim, concealable, and now in 45 auto. The Smith & Wesson m and Shield Pistol gives you all-day comfort and confidence. Its reliable performance and easy operation make the lightweight, striker-fired M&P .45 Shield Pistol the perfect choice for personal protection. Power and performance you need from the brand you trust. The M&P .45 Shield Pistol from Smith & Wesson. Go to smith-wesson.com. That's smith-wesson.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. Built to perform in the harshest conditions, the Ruger American Pistol can take it all, from ice to dust and everything in between. The Ruger American Pistol features a short take-up trigger, Novak sights, and a recoil-reducing barrel cam with low-mass slide for reduced felt recoil, plus a modular grip system with three sizes to fit almost any hand. Check it out at Ruger.com. The Ruger American Pistol, because anything else would be un-American. Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis. Whether you're unbalanced, evading a threat, or engaging from behind cover, a laser sight aids in keeping you on target. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. So uh, rather than ask what's in your wallet, what's in your holster? What have you been shooting? 866-TALK-GUN is the magic number here. Just dial Tom Talk Gun, get you in here. I went shooting yesterday with my good friend Dan. Dan's gun guy. Uh, saying that's like, uh, <laughs> you're underselling just a little bit. Uh, whether it's, uh, doesn't matter. NFA stuff, uh, rifles, uh, NRA distinguished, uh, Camp Perry distinguished shooter, et cetera, et cetera. Dan just likes to pull the trigger. Uh, so I had this new 
well, new to me. It's not new. It's been out a long time. Smith & Wesson, 686, 7 shot, 357, revolver, 3 inch barrel. I was hoping I would have the new Ruger GP100 and 44 Special. It didn't come in, probably come in on Monday. Well, we'll talk about that uh, gun in the next hour. Very cool revolver. But we had, uh, let's see, one Smith, mine, two Rugers, and a Freedom Arms revolver. Mine was the little guy. I had 357 and shooting 38s in it. Uh, he had a 44 Special, single action Ruger, a 45 Colt, single action Ruger, and then the Freedom Arms revolver in 454 Casual. So we had a bunch of fun that we could do. We also shot uh, some ARs in 300 blackout. Oh, discovered something interesting. Working on he was working on some hand loads in his 300 blackout from a 10 inch barrel SBR uh, silence with a suppressor on it. It was nice and quiet. It was subsonic, and then stuck it in a 16 inch barrel AR with a suppressor, and it went. Supersonic. So the six inches difference in barrel length was all the difference. You know, and you could conceivably increase the velocity by 200 feet per second with six inches uh, more barrel. So one was clearly underneath the speed of sound. The bullet was going slower than the speed of sound, which allowed it to be quiet. And then the longer barrel, it was going faster than the speed of sound. Now, that was with a particular hand load of his. He also had, this was really fun, he also had a Ruger American rifle, bolt-action rifle, in 300 blackout with a can and using Hornady's subsonic ammo, which was, in fact, subsonic. And let me tell you, out of a bolt-action where you have no action working and no gases coming out in the rear, all of it going out the front, it is Crazy quiet, really slick. You know, and for, what, 350 bucks for a Ruger American rifle? Man, that's a nice package. So, back to revolvers. Uh, we're shooting these, and the 686 I have is a 3-inch barrel. It's got the rounded butt. Man, that thing felt good. Really felt well. And it shot well, felt good. Um, but for me... The sights were off. And no, they did not shoot low and left, because I shoot right-handed. They actually were shooting low and right. But fortunately, it has an adjustable rear sight. And so we did. Now, I started off shooting at 25 yards, which may not have been brilliant, but I was on paper, so it worked out. Uh, we worked you know, worked it back in there. And was shooting 38 special wad cutter loads, 148 grain lead wad cutter loads. Not much recoil, not much to them. Had some fun doing that and punching nice, clean, because wad cutters punch clean holes in uh, paper targets. That's one of the things you do. You shoot targets with them, and you get nice, clean cuts for scoring. Tons of fun, and then got up close and shot at some there, got it dialed in, and then did some faster shooting. Most of it was single action. And, of course, the trigger pull is very good, as everybody knows, on the Smith revolvers. Uh, double action and single action, no problem either way. And then shot some double action faster. And it was interesting. It was so much different. And I've, I've done, gosh, probably 98% of my shooting for the last few years has been semi-autos. That I found that I really had to concentrate on the trigger pull. Because if I got into a hurry, I would actually pull on double action low and right, because evidently I'm pulling, eh, think about that, kind of looking at my hand here. Somehow, I'm not pushing the trigger like low and left like you would when you shoot a semi-auto, but somehow going low and right, pulling it cross. I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. But if I concentrated, I could keep it where it needed to be. But that was that was pretty sweet. Did shoot some 357 out of it. And yeah, it barks a bit, but it wasn't bad. Uh, we were double muffed, had plugs and muffs on for hearing protection. So it wasn't bad at all. And let's see. Oh, we did have, I, sh I picked up a box of really old ammo. And I had a dud. And it went click fizz, which is never a really good sound. 
So I just held it on target for, I don't know, 20 seconds, thinking could be hang fire, could be something, and then got it out of there. And the bullet was still in the case. So I don't know if it was a no, I still have the cartridge. I don't know if it's a no powder issue or a bad primer, but it was a reminder. It was interesting. It was a reminder with a revolver when that happens. You don't do a tap rack. You just pull the trigger again. On a double action, obviously a single action, you can cock it and shoot it again because it's going to rotate a nice fresh round underneath the hammer. So that was kind of an interesting little deal. Then we shot the 44 Special, and that was wonderful. That is such an underappreciated round. And with a good hard cast lead bullet going 800 to 900 feet per second, uh, you can shoot through a deer. Just You don't need a magnum for that kind of stuff. So that was fun. Then shot the 45 Colt. Which, you know, which single action revolver, or single action Ruger, what are you going to, not much to say about that other than, than that they're wonderful. Uh, both of those had, tr- no, one of them had a trigger job, one did not. And as good as the guns are coming out of the factories these days, you know, when you get somebody who knows what he's doing, work on a trigger pull like that, it makes a difference. And then we went to the Freedom Arms. And I don't know if you're familiar with Freedom Arms, the revolver they make. It's the analogy that people use, the metaphor is you know, a tank, a bank vault, uh, whatever your description of pure quality, heavy, well-made, just pure precision. There's a reason they cost that much. I mean, they are pricey, but holy cow, is that a nice package. And we were, let's see, shooting a scope at 25 yards, just fooling around, getting it sighted in, and basically cutting one ragged hole. And that's off of sandbags. Man, that thing is fun. But you talk about a hunting rig, that is sweet. And, of course, one of the nice parts about a revolver chambered in 454 Casul, you can also shoot 45 Colt in that. So you could use the light cowboy-style 45 Colt loads, and you can crank it all the way up to the 60,000, unbelievable, 60,000 PSI loads, which are just hammers. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. What have you been shooting? What's your range report? You just heard mine, and boy, was that fun. Yeah, I really, I think revolvers are seeing some kind of a resurgence, and once you get back out there, you go, yeah, I like that. Revolvers, those will work. up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Sometimes something's so big, you just got to say, okay, we're, we're going to talk about this for a second. And we're going to get to, uh, Glenn and Ken, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you in just a second here. But this may be the biggest giveaway we've ever done. Um, this is stunning. The ultimate gear package. Let me get this out up front. If you got to go to our website, guntalk.com slash win. Again, guntalk.com slash win. Let me just run through what is being given away here. It's, it's crazy. This price pack. Va- valued at more than 9500 bucks. Yes, I said 9500 bucks. A new Springfield Armory EMP. A new Springfield Armory Saint Rifle. A Canon 64 gun safe, Crimson Trace link system, Crimson Trace Railmaster Universal Light, a thousand rounds of Freedom Munitions 9mm ammo, a thousand rounds of Freedom Munitions 223 ammo, Hex Mag 12 pack of AR 15 mags, Action Target Dueling Tree, Action Target 45 degree static target. It goes on. Proper apparel and gear pack, ATC adjustable gold flat trigger, Personal Defense Network 1 gold membership, Crossbreed holsters. Crossover belt, reversible nylon, a whole bunch of stuff from Cross Street Holsters. Cool stuff. Uh, let's see. It just it goes on and on. It's just nuts. Uh, <laughs> 9500 bucks plus plus. Uh, you go to guntalk.com slash win for your link there to enter. Wow. That's that's crazy. Uh, two guns, a huge gun safe, a whole bunch of Crimson Trade stuff, 2,000 rounds of ammo. Shoot. I'm not eligible to win. Glenn's on line three, Easton, Maryland. Glenn, what happened with you to you with the folks at Nikon? 
it was a great experience because I had a M308 scope, and when I got, mm-hmm. I was the second owner of the gun. The scope came with it. Top turret was bent a little bit and it wouldn't turn, so I called our customer Ooh. service. They said, "Send it in. We'll take care of it. No fault warranty. We can't fix it. We'll replace it." Okay, that's top-notch customer service. So, which did they do? Did they fix it or did they replace it? Uh, well, it's, it's there now. They're going to fix it, I guess. They can't oh. fix it, they'll replace it. But uh, they have it in hand, wow. and they're working on it. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool customer service, well, I would say. So, so obviously, you didn't have like the original sales receipt because you weren't the original purchaser no. from a gun store. You you got it used from somebody, and all you did is call them and say, "Hey, scope's not working." They said, "No problem. Send it back. We'll take care of it." Exactly right. And and when I got the uh, email from the customer service people, they said, "Don't worry about the original receipt or proof of purchase." Just send it in. That's great. Wow, that is a big attaboy for Nikon. Outstanding. So what do you use this gun for? Uh, well, I had it on a, um, a DPMS uh, 308 rifle, and mm-hmm. I was going to use it on that, and I'll put it back on that when I get it back. Um, so okay. it'll be good, good addition. Um, I, although I am going to probably buy a leaphole uh, after listening to your show. I didn't know they were an American company. I thought they were German. Just from the name, and then uh, oh. that they're in Oregon. That's that's great. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, they're right there in uh, Beaverton, Oregon. So yeah, outstanding. Well, good deal. You know, either way, you can't go wrong. Uh, good companies that stand behind their products. So, Glenn, thank you for that range report. A big uh, attaboy for Nikon. Ken is with us. So stay uh, over there in Medford, Oregon. As a matter of fact, line two. Ken, range report. What you been shooting? I bought myself a CVA Hunter. 4570 caliber single shot rifle. Uh, hmm. Always like the single shots because it's one shot, one kill when you go hunting. And I'm also mm-hmm. a cowboy action shooter. Um, when I took this thing out, uh, I thought it was going to be shooting very similar to the Sharps uh, 4570 that I've used in cowboy action shooting. But there was a mm-hmm. big difference. Uh, this has a synthetic stock and it has a scope. So I thought, okay, this would be a great hunting rifle. Well, the problem is, is I bought a Hornaday Leverick Evolution rifle uh, cartridges with the 325-grain FXT bullet. And this thing kicks like a really, really angry mule. Uh, (laughs) I saw that coming. (laughs) I I could not believe the recoil on this thing. Um, After 14 rounds, I got it into the 10 ring, and the last five rounds that I shot, uh, I was trying to zero it at 100 yards, and I finally got it there. And then I shot it at 100, and at 200, and 300, and it was right on the mark. But I had to grit mm-hmm. my teeth and hold my breath and hope it didn't <laughs> hurt when I fired it. They're so, not the same as the cowboy action loads, are they? Uh, no, not even close. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to find some information about what I can do to take some of the recoil out of this. And I've been told that there is some sort of a Benelli uh, marketed, uh, like a silicone beaded that you put inside the stocks to take up some of the recoil, but I haven't been able to locate Mm. those. Well, traditionally, uh, getting recoil out involves a few different things. One, of course, is uh, just adding weight to the gun. That is going to reduce the recoil. People have been known to hollow out stocks and put lead shot in there. There's also a thing that shotgun shooters use a lot called an Edwards recoil reducer. And those work pretty darn well. But again, they they go inside the stock. Um, Trying to think. People have done things as crazy as, uh, obviously, uh, the kickies pad, Michelle is saying. Make sure that uh, you have a good recoil reducing uh, you know, uh, pad on the back of that stock because that makes a big difference. Uh, I- I've actually seen people take what I think is like plumber's lead tape and tape it onto the bottom of the barrel. I mean, it would look goofy and horrible and ugly, but it would add some weight. But I don't think you want to go that far, do you? Not really. I did take the what they call their recoil pad off of the stock, which is not much different than an old tire that they cut out to fit the end of the stock. Uh, there's not much recoil in that pad, but the inside right. of the stock is hollow. Right. It's it's a molded well, stock and it's hollow. Would would like which just makes you start like, thinking? 
I, I'm sure that got you to thinking about what can I put in that hollow stock. I was thinking about maybe filling it up with number seven lead shot. <laughs> I'm thinking you. I like the way you think is where I'm going with that. And then and here's the most important part: put a really good recoil pad on there. And the Kickies, they make I think the material is called sorbethane, but it's basically uh, what originally was used, like in shoe inserts, you know, those like Dr. Scholl's kind of inserts things. But man, Uh that makes a huge difference. If you can get a kickies pad on there, fill that stock with lead shot, I think you're going to be about uh, 80% of the way where you need to be. That would be awesome. All right. Well, good luck with it. After you do all that stuff, call us back and let us know how it works out, okay? Okay. The the only other range report I wanted to give you is I bought a Bond Arms Century 2000 uh, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Could you hold on hold on to that? I want to I want to hear about that. That's an interesting gun. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll come back. Ken's going to give us his uh, second part of his range report. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. Face it, sometimes more is better. That's the idea behind the double-stack full-capacity pistols from Springfield Armory. From the groundbreaking XD to the ergonomic XDM to the latest refinements in the XD Mod 2 series, you can get subcompact, midsize, and full-size pistols in 9, 40, and 45. Carry, target, or tactical models. Fast, accurate, dependable. Don't come up short when it matters. Go full cap. Go Springfield Armory. Springfield-Armory.com. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or GunDealio.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. There's only one place where you can buy that firearm you've always wanted and turn it into your very own. That place is Brownells.com. Now offering a huge selection of firearms from all your favorite brands. Brownells is the spot to buy online. When you're choosing your gun, be sure to look over the enormous selection of parts, accessories, ammo, and more to make that firearm your masterpiece. Brownells.com. Serious about firearms. Back with you. I tell you what, uh, we are going to talk about it, so don't don't think I've missed it. We had uh, a couple of interesting things happen in the news this week. The United States Senate voted to undo the Obama ban on guns for people who get Social Security uh, help, who also want help with their finances. We'll give you more details on that, but that's going to go away. And the media coverage of that has been unconscionable. It has been so wrong and bad and it's not that they don't know the difference and that's the thing it's that they are willing to lie we'll talk about that in just a little bit uh, right now we're talking with ken from medford oregon he's got a another range report for us on the bond arms tell me about it ken yeah it's a bond arms century 2000 it's basically it's a three and a half inch barrel stainless derringer it shoots the mm-hmm. 45 Long Colt and the 410 three inch shell. And this okay. thing is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Uh, I've owned okay. Derringers in the past. And the last one I had was a Davis Derringer 38. 
but it was a smooth mm-hmm. bore. Bond Arms has done something oh. really awesome. At the end of the barrel, it's only about a half an inch worth. It actually has rifling. And when I was shooting my smooth bore Derringer at balloons in our competitions, I'd be lucky mm-hmm. to hit the board, let alone a balloon. Oh. This oh. thing could hit the tack that held the balloon. It is amazing. Uh, we're huh. talking basically about 25, 30 feet uh, shooting, and this thing is okay. awesome. It's so now, well. L- it, l- l- let but, me ask you this: You can shoot a forty-five Colt as well as a four ten shotgun shell in there, right? Yes. Have you done both? Yes. The four ten shotgun work with shell the shotgun was a bit shell. of a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has a little bit of recoil, but if you're prepared okay. for it, uh, it's not bad. It actually feels about the same because uh, I was also looking at the idea of possibly carrying this as a uh, concealed carry gun. I have some Glazer safety slugs right. that uh, basically are they're plus B forty five Colt, twelve hundred fifty feet mm-hmm. per second. Shooting mm-hmm. one of these is about the same as shooting the three inch uh, trap load four ten shotgun shell as far as recoil. Huh. Okay. All so, right. I got a question for you. Okay. Uh, I've looked at the Bond Arms, and they are obviously very well made, and a lot of people love them. And But I want to ask you your thought process on this. For a concealed carry gun, it's not a small gun, and it's not a light gun, is it? No, it's not. It, as technically it's small, I have a, uh, a Ruger LCP 380, and as far mm-hmm. as holding it in hand, it has a similar feel, but it's a little heavier. Mm-hmm. Um but the difference with this, I didn't like the fact that the LCP does not have a hammer. It does not have a safety. I'm a single-action shooter, a, a, a SAS member, and I've been right. shooting single-action. All of my revolvers are single-action. I've got 22s, 44s, 45s, and I, ah. I've always done single-action. And I like mm-hmm. the fact that this thing has a hammer and it has a safety. So and it doesn't bother you that it only, has two, but it only has two shots. One shot, one kill. That's well, my, yeah, that's great. Except that if there's three, if there's three bad guys, uh, you're you're coming up one short. Well, it's heavy enough that you could throw it at them and hurt them. <laughs> uh. Well, at least you have a plan. I like this. <laughs> uh, it is heavy, and you could throw it at somebody. Hey, I really appreciate it, Ken. That's a great range report. I uh, I love it. Yeah, the Bond Arms uh, Derringer. They're pretty hefty, pretty big. Obviously, well made. And people divide strongly on whether they like him or don't. But Ken, because he's a single-action shooter and likes to cock a hammer, there you go. Uh, he's ready to go. Hal's in Trapper Creek, Alaska, on line one with Range Report. Tell me about your Savage, Hal. Well, um, it's snowing here in Trapper Creek, and uh, so I'm not shooting today. I'm listening to your radio program. And I, was, I bought a Savage 10T, one of the Cabela specials, uh, about mm-hmm. a year ago, a 308. Really impressed with that rifle, and was so impressed I went out and bought a 6.5 Creedmoor in the, the same Ooh. same deal. Okay. Um, you know, and those are much different than the Savage I started shooting in the 1950s. That actually oh heavens and yes trigger is, is all right. Awesome. Real quickly there because I don't I don't have a lot of time. Hal, just give me the quick rundown. How's that rifle shoot for you? Well, the uh, the 308 I've shot out to 300 yards so far. Uh, five five shot groups average two to two and a quarter inches at three hundred. Um, nice. At a hundred, it looks like I've shot my three seventy five H and H one shot. They all in the same hole, spreads out a little bit better than the three hundred eight, probably about uh, maybe four tenths of an inch outside. Oh, to outside. Okay, real quick, real quickly, what are the group sizes on the six five Creedmoor? The six five Creedmoor, I'm just breaking that in right now. Point uh, five five at a hundred yards. Zowie! That'll work. Hey, Hal, thanks. That was a great range report. Yes, and you're right. The Savages being made today are nothing like the ones that we used to shoot. In fact, my first bolt-action rifle was a Savage left-handed 110. Savage 110 in 7 mag. It was sweet.
big news from the week was the United States Senate voting with the House and now sending to the president a measure that rescinds the Barack Obama order for the Social Security Administration to ban thousands and tens of thousands of people from owning guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. The news reports are all wrong on this. The CNNs, the CBSs, the New York Times of the world all said, the Senate has voted to give mentally incompetent people guns. The mentally ill people will now be able to have guns with no restrictions. Well, that's just a lie. It's not that they don't know the truth. Okay, Make no mistake about this. They are lying, and they know what they're saying is not true. Here's what it really was. Or was it five years, four years ago, the Obama administration told its agencies, all the agencies, find ways to get large groups of people on the gun ban list. And part of that deal was the Social Security Administration figured out, well, we can do what the VA has been doing. We will say that anybody who uh, says they need someone else to handle their finances, we'll just say that they are incompetent and they can't own a gun. Now, the news reports on this said, well, then the Social Security Administration would then send that name to the FBI where it would be on a background checklist. Well, doesn't that sound warm and fuzzy and okay? Who wouldn't be for having people on a background checklist? But that's not what it was. When they sent the names to the FBI, they were placed on the you may never own a gun for the rest of your life list. The prohibited persons list. We, we had a report just last week about a, a lady, a veteran, who someone in the VA mistakenly clicked that box. And she is now a prohibited person. Can't Not only can't buy a gun, can't own a gun. It's a gun ban. It bans ownership of guns for tens or maybe hundreds of thousands of people. No due process for people who may or may not have a mental problem. No appeals process. Just some nameless, faceless bureaucrat who places a check mark in a box. So the House voted to repeal it. The Senate has voted to repeal it. It now goes to President Trump, and he will sign it. So that's a good thing. But it does give us yet another example of how the media will lie about this continues to lie about it. In another case, one that did not go our way, an appeals court in Florida rules against the state in the what's called the Dox versus Glocks measure, where physicians were asking people about the guns they own. And Florida passed, the legislature passed a measure that says you can't do that. That's not what you're there for. You're a doctor. You're there for health care. You don't get to know about guns that people own. Of course, doctors would say, well, we're checking on their general welfare. Sorry, not your business. Nope. If I come to you for a sprain or a cold or a flu, you take care of that. So that now the question is, and I'm just going to say it so everybody has this. If you go to the doctor, if they ask you about gun ownership, you don't own any guns. I don't care if you're wearing an NRA hat and a Second Amendment Foundation shirt and a Black Hills ammunition <laughs> belt buckle. No, of course, I don't own any guns. Remember my line. It's not a sin to tell a lie to someone who's not entitled to know the truth. Just food for thought there. Hmm. There's a new revolver out. And boy, do I want it. I got one on the way. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to be talking about it when we come back. But I, this is, I'm, I'm declaring 2017 the year of the revolver. Let me tell you about this. It's brand new, featuring old, cool stuff. That'll be coming right up. <laughs> 